Hello, dear friends, and welcome on Alatra TV Ireland. In our today's broadcast, we are going to meet a very interesting person. We will introduce him to you very soon. He will tell us a little bit more about our amazing Ireland and will share with us his understanding of a creative society. Creative Society is a global international project of a large international public movement where volunteers from all over the world conducting social surveys and interviewing people to get to know how do they envision the society where everybody on earth is happy, where we all live as one big family, where people have everything they need and do what they really love and what benefits the entire society. My name is Alina, and my co-host name is Keith. Keith is going to explain us the theory we are testing on in our broadcast. Hello, everybody. Yes, for our conversation today on Alatra TV, we are using the rule of six handshakes. It is the theory that all people on Earth are connected with each other through five or less people. At the end of today's conversation, we are going to ask our guest as well who he would like to meet and have a chat about creative society in some of our next broadcasts. It can be any living person on earth. And to reach that person, we'll ask our viewers to share this video with the use of two hashtags, hashtag creative society and hashtag Altria Yes, thank you, Keith. So, dear viewers, I'm very happy to introduce you our guest, German Magvila Rua, composer and uh, musician, uh, songwriter, and Irish language promoter. Thank you, Dermot, for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Hello, Elena and Keith. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me to be on the program. Uh, Certainly the, the concept of creative society is something very close to my heart as I live almost my entire life in a, a creative bubble, or I try to. It comes uh, naturally anyway. Um, and I love to encourage creativity in people. Um, uh, I would love to see every single child uh, say a, a point uh, I make frequently is that in Ireland, I'm sure it's the same in a lot of other uh, countries. If when children uh, go to secondary school or primary school, they must often have to make a choice between will they do art, uh, graphic art, or will they do music? Um, whereas I believe if somebody is creative, uh, they should have access to every exploring their creativity in as many ways as possible um, through creative writing, through poetry, through graphic art, through sculpture, through singing together choirs, music, learning an instrument, um, and uh, access to music should be made available to everybody from an early age so that they can uh, connect with uh, the love of creativity that is, I believe, is in, in every single person. Um, sure. and Thank you. Thank you so much. Could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you are doing? Yeah. Well, I, I'm not a professional, uh, although I describe myself as a composer because that is my number one passion in life. Um, I just, ever since I was a child, it was a source of uh, amazing comfort to me uh, in times of stress. Or to, we always had a piano at home and my father played. Um, so just the mere fact that I, I believe it's a great thing for every parent to make sure there's their instruments uh, in the house and even if a child only comes up to a, a piano or um, presses a note every now and again or plucks a, a string on a guitar and um, that those little the, the fact that they can make that sound uh, will, will be a spark and maybe later on and uh, maybe years will go by but at some stage that spark will add to other sparks and um, they may take up the instrument and discover a great love of, and the comfort uh, it is and the, the, the pleasure of playing music and creating it not just for yourself and then if you, you you learn pieces of music and you get to share it with other people and you see that joy then goes out uh, and it spreads and uh, the people listening to the music 
are in a way participating and making it even better. And um, for almost the whole of my life, music was a hundred percent personal thing. I mean, it was just me, my piano in the front room with the door closed. And um, because I, I, I didn't have the patience to formally um, put the, the time and the effort and the hours in to uh, learn music uh, pro- properly, uh, academically, which I later very much regretted. I would have loved to have studied music properly. And um, maybe uh, I, I go to see a lot of classical music concerts a lot, and I would have loved to have been in an orchestra. But um, anyway, uh, by not having the ability to really write, write music, in order to have some music to play, I started making up little tunes uh, for myself, just to have something to play. And they developed and developed and developed over the years. And then uh, they got better and better and better, in my opinion, anyway. So about five years ago, um, through a real unusual event, I was... My, my son is a very creative person as well, a great songwriter. And he mainly plays, uh, composes songs on guitar. So I was trying to push him to, um, to do a performance in a local open mic. Uh, these are sessions which um, sometimes uh, spring up uh, and in a local pub. They were inviting people, if you can sing a song or play an instrument, why don't you come around and play in front of our... Uh, our, our, our small audience so I was trying to push my son to go and uh, for the first time and I got dragged in and it was the first time I ever played any of my music for anybody else so I got a great reaction back because you, 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 it's one thing to enjoy playing a piece of music yourself and in particular it, it's very different learning say a very popular song like if you if you learn a Beatles song everybody loves the Beatles and everybody knows the Beatles so if you go in front of other people and then play the Beatles song, they already know the song, and it's you. You already have most of the work done, and then if you perform it well and sing it well, it'll be a very enjoyable experience for you and for the people listening. But if you compose original music and you go out and you play this, it's it's uh, how are people never ever heard this before? How are they going to take it? Are they going to hate it? Is it too long? Is it boring? Is it? Um, you, you have self doubts, but it, it, it was a for me anyway. It was a fantastic experience to start playing in front of people, and I got great, great feedback. So I've been doing it fairly regularly since any opportunities I get, um, and uh, from smaller crowds to bigger crowds. I still have Dermot, never played professionally. <laughs> Dermot, can I ask you what motivates you to teach children music and to? encourage them into the world of music? Um, uh, one of my other big passions is the Irish language. And I'm the chairman of a committee. We're trying to establish a new Irish uh, secondary school. Uh, um, we hope to have, if we, assuming we get this school established, we hope to give this school uh, very much a different kind of an ethos uh, from a lot of the mainstream um, schools, which are just predominantly academically orientated. They, their main focus, uh, a lot of them may have music and sport, etc. Their main focus is getting children prepared for their state exams. Um, we would, we and uh, my fellow members of the committee who are looking for this school, we really want to see six years a uh, child spends in uh, post-primary school as a fantastic experience that will build their character and uh, certainly the, the teaching of music and the teaching of all sorts of creative uh, ideas. Uh, we believe we can bring, say, a school play can uh, bring artists together for painting sets and maybe creating puppets. Um, it can bring musicians together. It can bring uh, creative composers together. Uh, it's a great way of, of letting all sort of streams of creativity and blend and merge and see that, that they really are all just different faces of the same thing. And it's, it's, uh, it's a way of uniting people as well. Um, so I would, I would hope uh, that assuming if we do well with this and that our school and its approach to really pushing creativity would be um, a model for other schools to follow. Very good. 
Thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah, music is a huge part of Irish culture, and uh, we are prepared a short uh, video for you with Irish music, and for yeah. our viewers, of course. Now I would like to ask our IT team to show it. Okay. And after watching it, Dermot, maybe you can tell us what you think of it. Certainly. Uh, uh, I, 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 well, I probably is, is true for everybody, but certainly for every single Irish person, the minute they hear an Irish reel or a jig, which is what, what that piece of music was, you automatically kind of help your foot to start tapping in time to the beat of it. And that's the nature of Irish, Irish traditional music. And it's a beautiful old tradition that goes uh, way back into the mists of time. The very first instrument that was displayed there was the harp. Um, and that's one of the, I mean, they believe that the harp was being played three, four thousand years ago uh, in, in Ireland, the Celtic harp. And it's still very much a, a traditional Irish instrument today. Um, and then more, uh, you, you have sessions, traditional Irish sessions in uh, pubs and, and halls where groups of traditional Irish players come together. And there'll be a, a body of music that every traditional Irish player will, will know. And then other, other uh, musicians will have um, uh, knowledge of, of other little pieces of music or songs that other people might know. And this is how it, it's in, in the, the session uh, and the flas and the little sessions. Uh, these are kind of little traditional Irish festivals that take place where different traditional musicians come together and share music and learn music and go off with new music, having maybe uh, given uh, other musicians new music they hadn't heard before. Through Dermot, yeah. um, how do you think music helps people? Oh, music is the most healing, soothing uh, thing in the world. I mean, and it, 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 it is um, completely transcends boundaries of uh, countries, cultures, language. I mean, uh, I could go to any anywhere in the world, uh, and if, even though I may, may not speak the language, I may not know much of the culture of the people there, but if there's a piano there and I start playing, I will immediately have friends in that place. Um, we may may have to communicate through sign language um, or point, pointing at things, um, but that's the way it is. And likewise, if... if uh, I was in, in uh, a pub in Ireland with some of my friends and some musicians from Russia came in and started playing. We, we really, really enjoy the music. And it's great, always fantastic to hear new music and different music. Um, so there's no limit to it. A lot of young people, I mean, uh, it, there's a huge music industry in, in the, the pop world and that's very, very commercial. And a lot of young people, like, and it, it's orientated towards um, the... Uh, like uh, to be dance friendly or whatever for discos, and even that's a way of getting young people. Um, in every, but in every, even in that genre, you'll see all sorts. You'll see certain musicians and certain bands will maybe incorporate some something classical, maybe something else. And the more music uh, that people, individual people, listen to, the more their knowledge of music builds and grows and develops, and the more they can come to appreciate music as they go on. But uh, that's the great thing about music. It's, it's accessible on so many levels, from the most simplest little level. It could be four people with a tin can and a stick, and they, get, they can sit together and beat the, beat the tin can. They're making music. Uh, they're making music together. Um, or it can be uh, the most sublime concert with a full orchestra playing Beethoven or Tchaikovsky uh, or Mozart or any of the great composers. Um, I can see um, a piano beside you. Is there yeah, any chance you can play, play us a piece? 
Yeah, okay. You said I'd give you an example. Okay, so um, uh, actually, I'm going to play you. I haven't actually performed this uh, live before. Okay. I was saving this for an event to do with our, our promoting uh, the campaign for our new Irish school. So I wrote this just before Christmas, and I've called it in Gaelic on school new, uh, the new school. So new school. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. It starts off very, very simple, as we, our school will be before it gets into its full uh, potential, as we hope the school will be, and end simply. So. <laughs> For this one, uh, I've got to give you a, a, a strings and piano sound, to give it a more fuller, fuller sound. Okay, let's go to you. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you so much. It was really amazing. Yeah, thank you. So inspiring. Thank you. Very and uh, you know, um, we all know that through creativity, any musician can pass his inner state to people. And how do you personally think? How do you how do you say? your mindset to find the right place to create your music? Uh, all my music, uh, I, I had never ever once sat down and said, I am going to, uh, okay, I've got two hours, I'm going to write a happy song or a sad song, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. Every single piece of music I ever composed came to me. And I know it, it always, always, always is a reaction to something that affected me emotionally, something that made me very sad, something that made me very happy, uh, something that I found extremely beautiful. Once I, I am moved emotionally, uh, and the, the event will happen, and I, I will feel it, and then it, it's, not, it's not like there and then, sometimes there and then, but it might be two days later, I'll be peeling a potato or uh, mix it, making some dinner. And this melody will just come into my head. And um, is it because I don't read or write music, I, I use my phone, uh, the recorder of my phone, as the means of taking notes. So the first thing I do when I get one of these uh, melodies comes into my head, because I recognize it immediately, this is something new. Um, I'll sit down, I'll just play it on the piano, and take a quick recording of it. And maybe, excuse me, um, maybe uh, two days later, a week later, I'll listen to that idea back again and I'll sit down and I'll play it again. And then I say, well, what comes next? What, what, what else are we hearing here? And I work on it and I work on it. And sometimes two or three, uh, in one day, two or three musical ideas will come to me. And it may seem very, very different as I as I'm being overwhelmed here. But then when by the time I finished working on all three, I realized they, they were all parts of the one and um, they will merge into one piece of music. But uh, it's a strange process. There is a very, very old um, and famous, he was a blind harper. He lived in the early 17th century in Ireland and his name was Carolyn. Um, and there's lots and lots of very famous Irish uh, traditional airs that he composed on the harp, um, and he was blind. But when I was in uh, primary school, uh, we did this little poem about Carolyn. I remember, I always remember to, to this day, uh, there was a line in that, that translated from the Gaelic the poem was written in. Um, Carolyn was asked, where do you get your wonderful music? And his, his answer was, uh, the music is, does not come from me, but through me. So he believed it was all beauty comes from God. And it was a blessing that even though he had didn't have his eyesight, he was blessed in other ways with his music. And uh, I often feel the same, same way. I don't know why uh, somebody who wasn't trained in music should be given lots of musical ideas, but I, I'd be lucky to... Uh, put quite a body of music together. Um, and again, as I said, every single piece of music I wrote, it was my expression of something that affected me emotionally. So it was, it was like I'm connecting to the spirit of something when I'm, I'm listening to this music as I'm playing it. And then later on when you, you perform it for other people, and they, they may get it or they may not. But as quite often it, it, in my experience it has happened, that other people, and it's very, very shocking and surprising. I'm playing a piece, I'm turning around, and there's some people with, with tears running out of their eyes, and they're saying, Oh, that's so beautiful, or whatever, you know. And it's like all I can say is they have connected somehow. I, I've managed to convey whatever it was that affected me emotionally to compose the music. When I played at that time, I've managed to convey that spirit, and through the music, they have connected to the same. Same, um, same motion, and and that's that's very special. I, I've never made one cent from my music, but 
for the several times that that's happened, that's worked. It's weight in goals, like winning the lottery. It's like uh, to be able to give somebody something that came from my creativity that affected them so much that they felt it was so beautiful that they physically cried. And I said, well, okay, no greater compliment could, could I get from that. Dermot, can I ask you, based on your experience of commun- communication, c- communicating and teaching of many people, what do you think unites all people, regardless of their nationality, religion, age, profession, social status? What internally unites us all? Um, I would say for every single person, uh, it, it's... As human beings, we're, we're not meant to be alone. Um, and we're not meant to be isolated. And uh, we, we need company, we need, we need love, we need uh, support, we need friendship. Um, we were, uh, I was watching a, a, a movie or something with my son the other day where a character went to a therapist and my son said, what do you think of this? You know, it's very big in America. People going for uh, therapy, like what, what? And I said, well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it helps some people. I'm sure it does. But uh, I, I believe if you have a good family and good friends, that's all the therapy in the world you need. Uh, somebody you can speak to if you're feeling sad or down, or, um, who, who will offer you advice or maybe no advice, just an ear, uh, just to have somebody listen to you. But what connects everybody? So it, it's 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 the groupings we put ourselves in. We come from families, so our families unite us. Our families live in communities. Our communities unite us. And then as we later on experience going out of our communities and meeting new people in school, in college, in workplaces, um, we find I think most people learn that everybody is uh, is basically the, the same at the end of the day. Your experience. It with people and your experience in life. I think for me anyway, and I hope it would be the same for most people, is that they would find that the vast majority of the people everywhere are basically very, very good and want to help and want to be good people. It's so sad that others then, um, ex- uh, for whatever reason, whatever happened to them in their life, they see interaction with people as, as uh, opportunities to exploit or to steal, or to rob, or to abuse, and all, all, all the, the negative stuff that humans are capable of. But considering that human, you know, a human being can display the, the best, the most virtuous things that man can possibly be, and the worst, uh, the absolute dregs of, of horror, oh, yeah. it's a good thing that the virtue and the good far outweighs the, the negative. And I hope that through that process and for people to meet good people and come from good people and they will be an example and help other people. So somebody might say, well, look at that person. They, they live a very good life. Uh, I, I want to be like them. Or I, I believe what they're saying has, has, has valid and reason um, as opposed to somebody angry or negative. I hope anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Indeed, we are all connected and we are all looking for love and we have to be a good example for each other. Yeah. Today we are watched by people from different countries and for them we would like to show some pictures that will reveal more interesting information about Ireland, its its symbols and traditions. Dermot, maybe you can comment some of them. Certainly. Please, dear friends, IT team, show us our collages. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. We here we have a top left a photograph of Dublin City with the iconic new bridge. Uh, it's in the shape of a harp, <laughs> our national uh, symbol. And uh, uh, below that, you've got two girls dressed in traditional Irish costumes playing instruments in a march, probably a St. Patrick's Day march. We have uh, a big celebration uh, the uh, 15th of March uh, every year. Uh, we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. He was the saint who brought uh, Christianity to Ireland about 450 AD. Um, 
you have people jumping in the air dancing. In the next photograph, uh, below that, a group of traditional Irish people uh, playing at a session on stage somewhere, or maybe in a church. Um, beside that, you have a guy playing the bagpipes. The bi- it's funny, uh, the bagpipes, uh, there are a lot of our people in Ireland who play the bagpipes, but it, the bagpipes is m- primarily a Scottish traditional instrument. In Ireland, uh, the bagpipes, it's, it's a strange-looking contraption. You can see the, the gentleman there. So he's blowing through a, a pipe into a bag that fills with air. And then he's squeezing the bag with his elbow, uh, which forces the air down the main uh, chanter, it's called a pipe, that is, has holes in it that is fit, his hands and fingers are on. So that's how he's playing the, uh, the melody that's coming from, from the bagpipes. And then the three other uh, drones, I think they're called, stick the, the pipes that are sticking up. He can stop or release uh, those that give a kind of a, a, a chant in a particular key, depending on what way he's playing. The next set of photographs, we have, uh, it looks like a pipe band. Again, that would be more Scotland than Ireland. Oh, no, there are. I'm sorry, I have to, in Northern Ireland, which has a lot of people who came from Scotland as well, the pipes and pipe bands, such as in that main photograph, uh, would be very, very... Uh, popular. Um, next to that, uh, you have somebody playing keyboards or dulcimer, I think, and a harp would be um, below. You've got a group of Irish dancers, and then you've got an individual singing. That I'm not sure who, like, it's too small for me to see. It could be Daniel O'Donnell, one of our popular <laughs> uh, pop singers here. And then you've got a group of, another group of people there in that photograph playing a whistle, Bowron, which is an ancient Irish drum, like a taut skin over a wooden frame that they hit with a stick, a uh, guitar and fiddle, I think. Not that group. Thank you. In the, in last the beginning, thing. sorry. Oh, I think you have one more picture. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the chap with the flute is a very, very famous uh, flautist. He's a member of the group uh, The Chieftains. That's uh, Matt Malloy. Uh, he has a great pub. If any of the our, uh, European uh, viewers are ever in Ireland uh, and you find yourself over in the west of Ireland, if you go to the town of Westport, uh, Matt Malloy's pub is there. And seven nights a week, you will hear the absolute best of Irish traditional music in that pub. Although you'll, you'll, hear, you'll hear a great session everywhere, but uh, he in particular is a very famous um, and his band, The Chieftains, are so well known. If you never heard of them, uh, you should check out some of their music on YouTube or Spotify. Um, very, very good musicians. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. In the beginning of our conversation, Alina has already told us a little about the project Creative Society. And today we would like to ask you, Dermot, could you describe the society where you, your family, your friends, and all people would be happy? Um, okay, that's such a, a deep and complex question. We could be here for days discussing that. But in a, in a nutshell, I think um, people, and I have to hold my hand up and, and plead mea culpa as well. Uh, sometimes looking at the news, whatever one feels like kicking holes in the skirting board. Um, but uh, people should step back from politics because politics is so uh, so temporary and transient. You know, so one government gets elected this this term, and four or five years time, another government comes in. And, There'll always be people who, who support one side, don't support the other side. But instead of looking for differences, and instead of looking for minute, and instead of getting over angry about stuff, people should concentrate on what makes us happy. Um, I mean, basically, we're all the same. We, we, want, we want to laugh. We don't want to be angry and ranting and raving about this, that, and the other. We want to be uh, happy. We want to uh, share good times with our friends and our family. Uh, we want to enjoy beauty, we want to enjoy art, uh, music, uh, good literature, uh, poetry, 
And the sharing of these things, uh, there's an old saying, uh, a pleasure shared is a pleasure doubled. Or in, uh, we have another saying in Ireland, Gearin uh, Bert and Boher, to shorten the road. So if you have to walk a journey on your own, it feels like it takes ages. But if you have somebody there to talk to on the way, the journey goes very fast. So Gearin Bert and Boher, and uh, a pleasure shared is a pleasure doubled. So I think what draws, what is going to draw this, us together is what has always drawn us together. It is uh, not concentrating on the, the differences. Uh, we've, we have, there are differences, there's always going to be differences because you're not going to sit down and say, um, let's uh, say a group of people of different faiths, uh, Jewish faith, the Muslim faith, the Christian faith, uh, um, let's have a discussion on which is, what is the one through religion? Okay, well, we're not going to, not going to get anywhere with that conversation. We can uh, talk and have a rational discussion about, tell me all about your religion, tell me all about your religion, I'll tell you all about my religion. And we can, we can see where, where, at the end of the day, all religions are saying we believe in God and we believe God made the world for to be a great and happy place for people. And it's people go off on a side track and get lost and then go into dark places and do bad stuff. <clears throat> and it, it, it was always the same. We used to say, my parents used to say that about say, bullies in school. The, the bullies are the most unhappy people themselves. Okay, they're making other people unhappy, but they themselves are very unhappy. And you, pr you always have to understand people and where they're coming from. And I would hope that good people will help other people to become good people. Um, maybe if somebody has gone to a dark side in their life that this, 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 it's never irrecoverable, that they can come back and they can, with, with good friends and good support, um, and sort of join and share with, with people and connect to the inner happiness that everyone should have together. Dermot, we know you're yeah. one of the founders of a music school, which is very affordable for children. In your opinion, how important is it to make musical education accessible for all people around the gold and a creative in, around the globe in a creative society? Okay, well, sorry, I, I have to correct you. I, I, I didn't formally found a music school. I think uh, there might have been uh, a confusion about the fact that uh, I am the chairman of the committee looking to seek a new Irish language secondary school, which we okay. do want to be have an emphasis on uh, creativity and, oh. and music. But in general, your, your, your question is, is, is um, how would I see the teaching of music as being a positive thing around the world? Well, I, I think that's very, very obvious for, for, for everyone who, is, who either likes music. Um, I don't think you could find a single person on planet Earth who doesn't like music to some extent or other. Uh, and for, for, for those who, who Wish to. I recently went to a concert in the oh, National Concert Hall um, with the, uh, the Irish National Symphony Orchestra, and they um, had just uh, got a new uh, chief conductor. He's a Spanish man. I can't think of his name at the moment, but he gave a great talk before the performance. And he said, uh, when he sees schools cutting budgets and no longer making music available for children, he said, it makes me cry. Um, and I could fully understand what he was saying. He said, because um, th that night uh, there was a performance of a piece of music, which I think was on the state exam here uh, for uh, the children of final year of secondary school. So there was an awful lot of school children in the audience in their uniforms. So he gave a half an hour full description of the piece of music. Um, it was Berlioz's uh, uh, Symphony Fantastique, and he described uh, how it was all about a young man in love, and how uh, he said they, they, and then he got the orchestra to perform parts of the symphony. He said, and this is his heart when he sees his true love, and the timpani going boom, 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 and here's the love theme. Na, 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 na. Every time he sees this beautiful girl, and uh, by just simply giving that little 15, 20 minute talk. Not only for the school children that were in the audience, but for all the adults who are used to going to, to like myself, uh, to classical concerts, it, 
really opened it up in so many more layers and made it much more enjoyable. So I believe, I mean, if, if children get that from a very, very young age, there is no limit to their enjoyment of music, uh, no matter what kind of music they like to listen to. But hopefully it will spark creativity. And they'll say, well, hold on. If I can play an instrument and I can learn a Beatles song, I can play my own song. Uh, why don't we sit down and collaborate? And we'll, maybe somebody is good at writing poems. Well, could you, can we take one of your poems and put some music to it and, and sing it? And all of a sudden we have a new song. So let's perform it at the school play and get all the parents and everybody to applaud. And this, this is how you build up young people's confidence. Um, and it can only be a po positive thing for everyone involved. So I think that, that should be the, the road forward, in my view. Um, creativity will only do good. Great, thank you. And uh, Dermot, not in terms of one country, but uh, if you are considering the whole world as one, what positive examples have you experienced in Ireland that would, you would like uh, the rest of the world to see? What is so special about Ireland? Maybe some qualities, characteristics of uh, Irish people or some positive implementations, traditions that you would like uh, the rest of the world to have? Uh, okay, well, uniquely to Ireland uh, is... Uh, music has always, be because Ireland was such a poor country for so long, and I mean, we only got um, electricity, I think, in the 1940s. Uh, and for going back thousands of years, communities would come together in a house um, or a local pub or, or somebody's kitchen. And just that's what their entertainment, they didn't have television, they didn't have cinema, they um so they, what they what they did have was uh, music and Irish music is very very um one of its characteristics is it, it, it's it's not like uh, classical music that's very stylized and here are the notes and here's where what each instrument must play Irish music is very open to allowing other people to join in so if somebody comes up and they have a, a, a and even if there's no instruments they had this this system uh, in Ireland of, and they, they 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 would often have dances without a single instrument, and somebody would just they mightn't even have the words of a song. They, they had this uh, similar to the, the jazz scatting, um, and they, they would they would a uh, small example would be. <laughs> And with that beat, the people could have the traditional Irish dancing with just somebody making up words out of that. Um, the people, uh, they, the Irish people love singing together. So they will all, uh, most of the world would have seen um, particular uh, big international soccer matches. And always the Irish, the thousands of Irish fans, one of the big things they like to do when they travel as a group um, going to support, say, the Irish uh, football team when they're playing uh, in other countries, is they would belt out and sing uh, of Molly Malone, the fields of Atten Roy, all these uh, uh, famous uh, Irish songs. And you'll go into pubs, you'll hear the same thing. And it doesn't matter whether you have a good voice or a bad voice, uh, everyone will know the words, so you just give it your best. And hopefully there'll be enough good voices there that overall the tune is, is rel relatively uh, audible and understandable. Um, so I believe anyone who knows music, trip to Ireland, will, uh, not, they would not be disappointed. They'll find lots and lots of very, very good music here. At, at all levels, uh, we're very, very good um, singer-songwriters. We, we've got um, uh, great uh, classical uh, artists. Etc. So, um, but for, for traditional Irish music, um, it's it, which is very very unique to Ireland. Um, it's funny the, the, uh, after the Great Famine in the 18th century in Ireland, and so many really a million people died, and a million people had to emigrate. But amongst the million people who emigrate were lots and lots of really great, um, well-renowned musicians that brought 
a, a huge wealth of music with them to places like America, Australia, New Zealand. And over in America and New Zealand, amongst the Irish diaspora communities there, they continue to play the, these, uh, this music that was brought there by, by some of these um, renowned Irish musicians. And then they, some of those, uh, say, two generations later, 100 years later, 80 years later, uh, people came back to Ireland. And they had music and tunes that hadn't been played in Ireland since uh, the, the wave of people who emigrated maybe 100 years before. So it's great that Irish music could get uh, exported to these other countries and then come back and fill in gaps where it had been lost here at home where it was born. So it's another nice, nice uh, way that people abroad and people in Ireland can connect musically as well. Thank you. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, dear viewers, now we are moving to the last part of our conversation, and we would like to ask you, Dermot, who you would like to meet uh, and uh, talk about creative society in uh, our future broadcasts. It can be any person around the world. So we will test the theory of six handshakes. So who would oh. you like? To um. <laughs> There's so many people. Uh, uh, I'm very, very fond of the uh, Georgian musician Katya Bunyas Teshvili. And uh, I, I've watched many of her performances uh, on YouTube. And she was to play in Dublin two years ago. And I was so happy I got a ticket. And I finally, finally going, going to go. And I was hoping I, I might get to meet her after the concert. And uh, at the last minute, I think she got uh, an illness and she had to cancel and another musician stepped in and played the, the piece uh, that night, so I never got to meet her. But Katia Bundy-Tishvili would be one. Um, but there's so many people in all sorts of disciplines. Um, I know he's a very controversial person, but I would really like to meet uh, President Trump um, and have a conversation with him. Uh, there's... Uh, uh, great uh, artists. Um, uh, I love uh, pe people who know a lot about um, the ancient past. We, myself, my family, we like to go climbing up uh, mountains in Ireland. And we're blessed in Ireland with so much uh, Neolithic art. Uh, this 5,000 year old uh, symbols carved by the very first people who lived in Ireland. Uh, thousands of years ago. Um, so I'd love to meet experts in that and have conversations about that topic with them as well. But, uh, or it could be a complete stranger, anyone from plucked from any place in anywhere. And I would love to, uh, for a total stranger, to say, hello, I'm Dermot. Here's a bit about me. Tell me your name and tell me a bit about you. And I'm sure we'd have, just as I, I've never met uh, Elena or Keith before, but it's been great, lovely talking to you two guys today. So uh, if you like people and you enjoy company and you like talking, I'm sure you'll find loads in common with anyone. So uh, I think I could say literally I would be quite happy to speak to any, any person anywhere in the whole world. Great. Dear viewers, please share this video using hashtag uh, creative society and hashtag ultra unites. You can awesome. see them now on the screen. So we'll see, see how soon we reach. Um, what Tatia was her name? The Georgia yeah. singer? Katia, Katia Bunya Tishvili. Okay. Yeah. I would like I would like to play a piece of my music for her. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Super. You also would like to remind everyone who wants to join our project, uh, you can go to the Alatra Unites website and click join us and become part of this project. Dermot, thank you so much for yeah, exactly. You can see here on your screens our website.
Yeah. Yeah, you can join the country and join our wonderful project, Creative Society. Thank you so much, Dermot, for being with us today. Thank you. Is there anything you would like to add, maybe to wish to all people? Yeah, well, it was my uh, great pleasure speaking to you and to anyone who listened in. And it's always lovely to uh, share my music. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Everyone who heard it enjoyed it. Do uh, you want me to, to play you out uh, with a, a final piece before we part company? Or uh, are you happy to we let the show end here? We really, uh, we really enjoyed your music. We just uh, have a little bit limited in time now. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a Maybe I'm very happy to hear your music and to talk again with you. And hopefully, we can do interview with you in person when quarantine is finished. I would love you to. So, so much. Well, look. Yeah, so thank you very much. What you're doing is very, very positive. Uh, you're looking at the best of people and the best in people, which is everyone should be doing that. So I wish you all the best with that. Thank you. Thank bye you bye. so much. Okay. Thank you so bye. much. Bye-bye. Till the next time. Bye-bye. See you.